What do Earth, Mars, and Venus have in common? They're rocks. Each surrounded by some form of air we call atmosphere. And all three are whirling around the same light bulb. But while Mars and Venus are dead, the Earth is a cacophony of over a hundred million different species. But now, some people say that climate change will turn Earth, too, into a dead rock. Global warming is real, but is it a real threat? Let me take you on an interplanetary fairy tale. The story of Goldilocks and the Three Planets. Imagine life is a beautiful little girl skipping from planet to planet. Which one will she pick? Venus is the planet closest to Earth and has been revered through time and continents by as varied cultures as the Babylonians, Chinese, Mayans and Romans. From its size, mass and orbit, it is nearly identical to Earth. It's also entirely shrouded in thick clouds of sulfuric acid. These work like a thick cosmic blanket, keeping the body of Venus lasciviously hot. Scorching, in fact, at 500 degrees centigrade, that is 900 degrees Fahrenheit. Hot enough to melt a bar of lead. Goldilocks on the surface of Venus would be reduced to cinders. But before that, she'd be squashed into a French crack. It's not the gravity. Venus and Earth have almost the same mass. Things weigh almost the same on both planets. What then is crushing Goldilocks? On Earth, gravity and air weigh us down. Air may seem insignificantly light since we can walk through it, but there's a lot of it on top of our heads. This layer of air, ozone, and other gases around our planet is our atmosphere. Living on the surface, we carry the weight of whatever amount of atmosphere is above us. It's called atmospheric pressure, and we're used to it. Up to a point, the atmospheric pressure on Earth varies only by a fraction, up to one-sixth, depending on weather and location. The air on Venus is much more dense and heavy than the air we breathe. So the atmospheric pressure on Venus is not just a fraction that on Earth, but 100 times stronger. Standing on Venus is the equivalent on Earth to standing below one kilometer of water. But there is no water on Venus. To host an ocean, the surface of a planet must hover above the freezing point and below the boiling point of water. One way to keep a planet warm is to give it an atmosphere because it traps heat beneath it. The greenhouse effect is just this, the trapping of the sun's heat by the atmosphere. Yet, no ordinary greenhouse effect could produce the extreme Venusian heat and pressure. What happened on our twin planet that its surface became uninhabitable? A long time ago, volcanoes on Venus coughed up smoke and CO2, creating, at first, a mild greenhouse effect. This warmed Venus's rocky surface. But rocks contain an element which is released when rocks are warm. This element is carbon dioxide, also known as CO2. So as rocks on Venus got warmer, they released CO2, turning Venus's atmosphere denser. A dense atmosphere, dense atmosphere, look, a dense atmosphere is like a closely knit blanket. It traps more heat. This warmed Venus's surface, causing the rocks to release even more CO2. The atmospheric blanket kept getting denser and denser, and underneath it, the temperature and pressure skyrocketed while water molecules broke apart. It's what scientists refer to as a runaway greenhouse effect. In brief, Venus's atmosphere overdosed on CO2, and Goldilocks just skipped her way to Mars. Mars is the planet second closest to Earth. Unlike the air on Venus, which is denser than Earth's, the air on Mars is 100 times less dense. This makes for a light blanket that does not retain much heat. So the average temperature on the surface of Mars is minus 60 degrees centigrade. 
that is minus 80 Fahrenheit. Interestingly, Mars has seasons, so temperatures can reach 20 degrees centigrade. Comfortable enough for a swim. Except all the water on Mars is frozen in permafrost or at the poles. However, a network of channels and valleys shows that erosion by some form of liquid did take place on Mars. Whether a little or a lot of water was involved is uncertain. What is certain is that none remained liquid. What happened on Mars? A long time ago, the red and rocky planet also enjoyed a mild greenhouse effect. Like on Venus, warm rocks release CO2 into the atmosphere. Except Mars' atmosphere was filled with drops of water, which combined with the CO2 and turned it back into rock form, such as sediments. Meanwhile, volcanoes on Mars stopped erupting and coughing up smoke. The net result was less CO2 and less water in the Martian air. This triggered rains on Mars, removing more water and CO2 from the Martian air. A less dense atmosphere traps less heat. So the temperature on Mars started to cool. The atmospheric blanket kept getting less and less dense, trapping less and less heat. And underneath it, the temperature and pressure dropped. Water molecules froze or got locked into rocks. So on Mars, a reverse greenhouse effect took place. A runaway refrigerator and Goldilocks kicked her way to Earth. On our fair planet reigns a balance between the amount of CO2 released into the atmosphere, a process which warms the planet, and the amount removed from the atmosphere into sedimentary rocks, a process which cools the planet. The net result is a stable temperature that allows for large oceans of liquid water year-round. By tilting the balance of CO2 released and removed from our atmosphere, we can thicken or thin Earth's cosmic blanket and change the temperature on our planet. Factories and automobiles are doing just this because they release CO2 and other greenhouse gases, making our air thicker. This in turn is warming the surface of the Earth. Why don't we stop this? Because, in effect, our society is Addicted, addicted, addicted to CO2. Could our atmosphere overdose on it? You can see extreme examples of this in the night sky by turning your eyes to Venus and Mars. Beautiful, but lifeless rocks. One minute to ask destruct. One minute to ask destruct.